Welcome back to Nate the Hate. Today's episode isn't going to be a standard episode. It's going to be a short one addressing a single topic, the recent Nintendo leak that confirmed the existence of Nintendo Ninjas and how Nintendo approached a well-known 3DS hacker and how some people are viewing this as a controversial maneuver by the company. Now, typically this wouldn't be a matter I'd address and I had no intentions of doing so. However, the ceaseless flood of misinformation has pushed me to recording this episode because I don't like a lot of the misinformation that is circulating and I feel as though it needs to be addressed in a more direct and frank matter. Now, before we get into the topic, I want to address those that have made recent Streamlab donations. Due to the shortened nature of the episode, I won't be answering the questions at the end of this recording. I view your donations as generosity given to a full episode, and I don't want you to feel as though I'm assigning your donation to a lesser episode. I want you to feel as though you got your money's worth out of your donation, and I want to do right by you, so your Streamlab question will be held until the next full episode that I will record with MVG before the year of 2020 concludes. So I just wanted to address that first and let everyone understand why you're not hearing the Streamlab questions at the end. Now for the actual topic, did Nintendo use shady tactics to recruit a promising young talent? Did they intimidate or violate any type of law in what some are calling stalking of this individual? And the simple answer to this is no. What we saw with the recent leak is that Nintendo approached a Belgium 3DS hacker because they were impressed with their work. Nintendo sought to recruit them and have them join the company. Now in doing so, and this is where much of the outrage and controversy stems from, is that Nintendo had to investigate them. This investigation led to detailed notes of the individual's daily routine and a flowchart plotting potential outcomes. And this is where a lot of these a lot of outrage is coming from. People are reading this information, seeing this detailed profile of the user's day-to-day -day activity, and saying, well, this is really bad. This is a really bad look for Nintendo. Now, context is key here. A lot of the slides that were in this were proposals, and they weren't active plans. And too often, what we see on social media is that people leave out context. They leave out context because they want to spin a narrative that suits their interest. And unfortunately, one big thing on social media in the last few weeks has been propaganda to attack Nintendo. Whenever there is something that may be negative that can be used against Nintendo, people omit information so that they spark this outrage and say, look, Nintendo is such an evil company. And you know what the truth is? Every single company is evil in some form. Nintendo's not your friend, just like Sony and Microsoft aren't your friends. Disney isn't your friend. None of them are friends. They're companies. They're all looking to make money. They're all looking to cater to your interest to make you hand them your hard-earned dollar. You shouldn't view Nintendo as your friend. Reggie fils Furukawa, none of the suits. Doug Bowser, no one working at these companies is your personal friend. So many have taken offense with the investigation and they have viewed it as a form of stalking. And the matter on this topic is, none of this is exclusive to Nintendo, nor is this a business practice that's uncommon in the tech industry. Most major technical companies have done this form of investigation to assess and amass information relating to a party that they have interest in. It's an industry standard. Now, does that mean you have to like it? Of course not. Can you find the practice to be a violation of privacy? You can but there's nothing illegal happening here. What they're trying to do is actually amass a profile of an individual so that they can assess it and then basically come to the conclusion of, is this an individual that we want to pursue for recruitment within our company? And that's what Nintendo did here. And we also have to remember, the files that you're seeing were never meant for public eyes. They were meant for Nintendo to look at. They were meant for business only. and to the people who did leak these files, you probably could have done so with a little more discretion because in the slides you publicly blasted all over Twitter, you essentially dox the individual. So if you want to be upset at someone for violating someone's personal privacy, you should probably look into the mirror. And one big aspect that I've seen be brought up time and time again is that Nintendo intimidated this individual. Now I've looked over these slides 
several times now. And what I'm finding in the files is that Nintendo approached the individual and they specifically highlighted in a non-threatening manner, present business cards, discuss things in a professional manner. Well, that doesn't really sound all that intimidating. Now I understand if someone comes from nerd, NOA, NOE, Nintendo Japan, and they come knocking at your door and you know you're hacking, you may be nervous. But it seems to me, based on this information, that Nintendo approached this in a very professional manner. They came to him as professional as possible. And they wanted to recruit him. They offered trips to Nintendo HQ in Japan, access to prototype hardware, and other unreleased hardware to help sway them to join Nintendo. Intimidation? This sounds like recruiting from the NCAA. Nintendo saw the potential and ambition of this individual. They recognized the promise that they had. They recognized talent, and they were willing to go ex to extreme lengths to get them to join their company. Promising them access to prototype hardware? That's not something you would do lightly. That's actually industry secrets. That means Nintendo saw such promise in this individual that they were willing to go to such extreme lengths to sway them, to join them. And that's pretty telling of how much they really wanted to recruit this individual. Now, what's really concerning is people think this is still exclusive to Nintendo. Sony and Microsoft are equally as guilty of this, as said, industry standard practice. Over a decade ago now, Sony investigated and charged PlayStation 3 jail jailbreak hacker George Hotz, also known as GeoHot. Eventually, the two came to an agreement, and under the condition, GeoHot had to agree to never perform reverse engineering, decompiling, or dissembling any portion of a Sony product. This was a huge topic back in 2010-2011. And Sony used their legal right. They went to sue the individual. They eventually came to an agreement. Now, Microsoft kind of has two instances that are known to the public. The first deals with the original Xbox and a hacker known as Bunny. And the more recent one is Super Day, who sold Durango dev kits on eBay and had access to a lot of Microsoft confidential information. With Bunny, Microsoft and Microsoft eventually came to an agreement with them. And I believe Bunny even wrote a book about the encounter. They were at MIT at the time and the MIT lab stood up to Microsoft. With Super Day, that is a far more complex situation of what happened there, but eventually I believe they were charged and you know Microsoft went their way. Now we haven't seen the detailed flowchart and profile of these users because well Sony and Microsoft didn't get hacked and the files didn't leak, but they surely exist. And there's a lot more hackers that have profiles at all different forms of tech companies. And again, you don't have to agree with it, but it is an industry standard practice. And when you look at what Nintendo was doing with this particular individual, they created a profile to basically serve as a headhunting profile. They wanted to know about the individual. They knew their talents. They knew their education. They knew what they were going to get from them. They just wanted a more comprehensive look of the person. And again, you don't have to agree with this, but tech companies track known hackers. They have ears in the hacking community. They're aware of what is happening. And people say, well, why would they do that? Why don't they just sue the people? Because their first interest is going to be to recruit them. And people might still say, why would they do that? Because by recruiting them, they're able to use their expertise to assist in creating better security by finding vulnerabilities in their systems or services. Now, this is a practice that's known as white hats. Companies like Nintendo find those within the hacking community and they will have them 
hack the security systems that they have on their hardware. And then Nintendo can address it and say, this is the exploit, let's fix it. If, a per if you go right to the source of the individual who found the exploit and you can bring them to your team to fix it, it's a win for everyone involved. And again, you don't have to like this. But the reality of this situation today is that this story took place seven years ago. It's not new. It's, it's actually irrelevant now. For all we know, the individual that Nintendo approached is working for them, and they can be quite happy enjoying a fantastic career within Nintendo. And I've seen people say, we have to boycott the company. Well, if you're going to boycott Nintendo over this, then I hope you're going to boycott Sony, Microsoft, Samsung, Apple, Google, Facebook, and every company that created a piece of technology or electronic that is in your home at this moment. Because this isn't exclusive to Nintendo, so let's not treat it that way. You may not agree with the way they went about things, but there's nothing new here. Every company's done that. Every company has a flowchart and a profile written up on dozens of hackers. Many may not have been approached, but there's a file on them. They're always under watch. And this also goes for insiders, and we'll use the video game industry as the example. If you consistently leak accurate information, Nintendo's watching, Microsoft is watching, and Sony's watching. They're just waiting until you cross the threshold of where they say, we're no longer tolerating this. Now we're going to act. And that will conclude today's shortened episode of Nate the Hate. I want to wish everyone listening a happy holiday, a happy and safe holiday, and we will be back with a full episode in the near future before 2020 concludes. And until then, continue to embrace the hate.